today, I want to think about the Incarnation, sometimes known as God wrapped in skin, the invisible becoming visible. We live in a very visual age and lots of our time is now spent staring at screens. We are constantly impacted by what we see and those images are all the time communicating to us, telling us what is beautiful or ugly, acceptable or disgraceful, desirable or to be rejected. Of course, the visual is only the superficial, the surface. And what is on the inside might not reflect what is on the outside. But what is within will certainly impact our actions. So, when the invisible God becomes the visible Jesus, what do we expect to see? We may have thought that God in flesh would be the most all-encompassing, attractive being there ever was. But these words from Isaiah suggest something different. Isaiah 53, verses 2 and 3. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence, like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. So, rather than be treated like a well-known popular celebrity, Jesus in his life will be overlooked. He will be ignored, rejected, misunderstood by his own family and his closest friend, accused of being in league with the devil, betrayed, hated by the religious elite and eventually killed. His journey into humanity and through it would not be an easy one. In his humanity, Jesus faced all the emotions that we face, and yet his response was different to ours. My friend Graham Reed once gave me this saying, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do with what happens to you that really matters. And I think the thought behind this is simple. When you get angry, have fear, or any strong emotion. It's what you do then that really matters. How you act or respond when the feelings are strong. Jesus experienced all the emotions that we as humans face today. He got angry and caused chaos in the temple. He was heartbroken and wept at Lazarus's tomb. He was disowned by Peter and yet he forgave him. Have you ever wondered, how did he do that? I think we need to understand that we all feel fear, we all get angry, we get dismayed, lack of genuine love, but that's not the issue. The issue is more, what do we do when we have those feelings? Even though sometimes they can be very strong and all encompassing. In his incarnation, Jesus walked into and through all the feelings that we experience. Otherwise, he couldn't claim to be fully man. But he demonstrated that there is a way to navigate those feelings, to go through them and find a way to live. He knew he was loved by the Father and that he could never be separated from that love. He knew that despite the feelings of fear, hate, rejection, none of these feelings would put his relationship with the Father at risk. And he drew on the wellspring flowing from deep within 
so that when he was rejected, he loved. When he hated, he forgave. When despised, he showed mercy. When surrounded by dismay, he spoke hope. Remember the conversation he had with the woman about water? She spoke of a physical thirst, but Jesus spoke of a much deeper spiritual thirst. He said that whoever drinks the water that I give will never thirst again, and that the water he gave would become a wellspring, welling up within to eternal life. So, the incarnation is not so much about the outside appearance, but more about what there is inside, the inner condition. Today, may you know this well flowing up from deep inside, reminding you that you are loved. Let us pray. Father, help us this day to drink from that wellspring of life you provide and to know the certainty of your love for us every day, no matter how we feel. Amen.